Hello and welcome to River Darling Art and ASMR. Today we're going to carry on working on my dear illustration. We're going to use one of my favourite things to use to finish a painting, uh, which is acrylic markers. And we're just going to have a little bit of fun while we play around with them. Um, do a bit of whispering, do a bit of talking generally make some nice sounds. The first one I've got for you is this. I love the sound that masking tape makes when it's pulled. This is on GASM 300 Bristol Board, which is a really thick paper, and it takes the colour really well. Um, I love how it just lets you pack drawing ink into it, and the drawing ink I use is shellac based, so the pigment is suspended in basically full snails, um, and it likes to sit on the surface, so the thicker and thicker the layers of paint, the more it gets the sheen to it, but I always find the paper takes it really, really well. So this this is the acrylic markers that I use. There are a few brands out there, but this one's got really popular lately. And you just tip. And that's how there's a little rocker inside. It just mixes up that pigment, so you get a good, thick, rich line. And this one here, this is a metallic, and I don't normally use metallics, but I just felt like this is so rich and all to me. It would be nice to kind of put it in, make it pop a little bit. Um, I tend to like playing around with different colour schemes. I like to mix them up, so if I've gone for something very red, very earthy, then I think a nice way to make a dramatic mid-tone is then to use something that contrasts with it. So a green, for instance, with these oranges, um, and I think that kind of gives the illusion that light breaks up when it hits something, because no matter what colour something is, when light hits it and gives it a mid-tone, it's 
it's kind of always the opposite. So if light hits something black, to me it would be purple. Um, something orange and it would be green. Something blue and I think it would depend on the light, but it would be sort of yellow or red or green. Maybe maybe a bit of everything for blue. Blue's my absolute favourite colour. So blue and turquoise, just yeah. I find them really calming. And I find them strangely warm, especially turquoise, because it's got that earthiness to it that a pure blue doesn't. I'm just going to put it all around the outside of things, so I don't want it right on the highlight, because that's preserved for white, or it would be preserved for a yellow or a bright pink if I going to use it today. So I'm just going to put it where I want to create an accent, but I don't want to use up my white. Because I think to make something dynamic, there's a limit to how much white you can use. And the same goes with black. So if you were to use too much white now, I don't think you could use it to really make the things you want to jump out matter. Yeah, I think that will probably do. And we're going to play with another colour now. <laughs> I was telling you about white. Here it is, and I haven't even opened this one yet. vigorous that time, but only because I haven't used this one yet. And this, this is something else that you need to do when you use one of these pens for the first time. You need to get the ink flowing. So this is one of my scrappy old books. It used to be treasured, and now it serves its purpose. So I'm just going to get my pen and I'm going to press it. The nib kind of folds in, so that's how you get the ink to work to the nib.
So I think in these videos you're going to hear me talk a lot about colour. I have loved drawing with colour since I was a little girl. And I used to go fossil hunting down the beach. We've got some sort of clay cliffs. And I used to get these fossils, take them home. And I used to wet them with water because I felt that once they were wet, you could see different colours. And when they were dry, they were grey. And when they were wet, you could see these blues and pinks and purples. Um, and I feel that's translated into how I make my work now. And I've learnt this mantra of my own that well, is probably a lot of other people's, I hope so, that would be exciting. To use as little white and black as possible. I mean, we know what they are. White is when all the colours um, a bounce back to you, and that's your eye picking up on the prism in its totality, which just sort of bleach washes itself white, and then black is the total absorption of colours, so it's everything. And I feel like it's more fun to use those elementary raw colours to try and create the impression. Um, because when we tend to see colours, we sort of assume what they are. You could look at a tree and say, oh, that's the trunk is brown. When in reality, it could have all these different hues bouncing off it, all these different colours and shades. So you could have sort of some rusty brick red or some deep maroon, some purples right in the shadows. And I think it's more fun to layer and use all these different colours rather than saying, I know how to create a dark colour and it's black, or it's black mixed in with another colour. Because it's so much more exciting to see what red and brown, what sort of black that would make, or a green and blue, what sort of black would that make, because they make a black but there's a lot more depth to it, if that makes sense. Even though it's a simpler black in reality, there's a lot more depth to it. And it all depends on the ratio in which, which you mix it. And the amount of water that you put in. Because if you put in a lot of water, you thin that paint out and it will reveal the translucency of the colours that you're choosing to create that black. Um... And I'm guilty, I think, as a lot of artists were when they started out of using a lot of black to create mood and atmosphere, when it can be so much more fun to create it with purple. I mean, you could create mood, sort of a dark, ominous mood with a light pink if it was hazy and clouded. So it's really fun to sort of play around with those colours and see what moods you can create in a more unconventional way and to really challenge your thinking in how you portray mood and tone. So I'm just going to put a little bit up here. I don't want to create too much highlight because again that defeats the object and I like how this feels a bit backlit, that the background is light and the object is dark, and that makes it feel like the sun is coming from behind him. So I just want to create these little lips of light, these lips of colour around the outside. And a little bit just up here.
So that's completely dry at the moment. Again, just start pushing to work that ink down to the nib. So I'm going to use this fairly similarly to how I use that metallic green. And I'm going to use it as a mid-tone. But I just want to create a few more shapes and forms rather than putting that lip, that outline on shapes where I want light to hit. I'm going to create a few more loops and textures just to round it out, flesh out some contours. So around the muzzle, around the sinew here on his cheek. Um, and build up the neck and the ear a little bit more. I may even play with this ear again in the morning. But we'll get it to a stage now where I feel quite happy with it. I'm just going to very gently go around the whites in the eyes and I'm probably going to go over that again with white in a minute but I just want to expand that pupil and again I'm using a mid-tone to bring in that there's two very different textures what I like using so the ink is very washy it can give you that sort of straight edge like slightly grainy line but the acrylic markers are very solid. They're very graphical. So I'm going to use that blue, as I say, around the eye to kind of blend it in as a mid-tone. And then I'll probably make the very point pop again with some white. I'm feeling quite happy with this. And here it is again. So just there on that top shimmer. And a little bit more around the nose because deer have really cute little noses. Just underneath where it is coloured white but I don't want to use it too much as a colour or then it breaks that. Mm, premise that I've been using it as a highlight. So when you're using something as a highlight that's also a colour, you kind of, it's good to be aware that you're doing that. So if I were to use this to colour that whole muzzle in, it wouldn't make the actual highlights pop quite so much anymore. And <laughs> I am finished, or I'm finished for now. So the practice of the signature. I do get this wrong quite a bit. I get to the very last bit and then the signature just, you know, I don't know what it does, but it does it. Yes, there we go. I'm happy with that. Lids on, folks. Lids on. 
there we go. Thank you very much for spending this time with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and I look forward to working with you again. We're going to probably play with something else, a bit more noisy, a bit more expressive. And until next time, take care. Bye.